I was going to say, you know, thank you so much for agreeing to do video for this, uh, because the one thing that I've learned being a, a member of the Yellowstone community is that uh, people don't mind looking at you, sir. So this is, <laughs> this is appreciated. What I love about Spencer, especially, is that, you know, for the multiple generations of this family that we've seen, he's the first one that's a bit of a globetrotter. And I was curious because obviously you, you built this character and he's got his demons, but I mean, that's a similar trait in a lot of Duttons. So why do you think that Spencer is the first one that couldn't kind of escape his demons? Well, I mean, the, the, the war is a big part of it, you know I mean? And like, he also, you know, he grew up seeing his father shot, you know, die in front of him. His mother froze to death. I mean, before he was even, into his teens, he had he had witnessed some pretty terrible things and had some pretty deep trauma, and that followed him into the war. And also, that trauma made it, it possible for him to do what he did in the war. You know, he he he, he grew up fast and he grew up hard, and it, it made him good in the war. And and but as a result of being so good in the war, you know, he came out with a pretty large body count and a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, and trauma and and i think you know him running from that and not knowing how to process that and deal with that is what sent him overseas to you know keep doing what he knew how to do is he the same spencer at any point that his aunt Kara or anyone else from that family knew i think fundamentally yeah there's a there's a core base to him that is there and i think that core base is what alex starts to bring out of him as the season progresses you know there's the, the walls start to come down. There's a vulnerability that comes out. There's a boyishness that comes out of him. And I think that's fundamentally who he is. And he's kind of built up this sphere around himself to protect himself uh, physically and emotionally. And I, I, I do think that as it progresses, you start to see that more and more. And he, he does come home with that for sure. When I was talking to uh, some of the cast members of 1883, they were talking about cowboy camp some of the conditions that they had to film in with the period clothing and the heat and the rain and everything oh, like yeah. that. Did you, uh, did you have to go through any suffering or does it, is it all the glamorous pretend love making on turquoise water? And everything <laughs> like that? Uh, no, it was rough. I mean, I, but I'm, I mean, I like it. I like working hard. I, I, I grew up super blue collar, you know, doing construction and stuff and I don't mind it it's uh it adds to the work you, know, you have to do way less as an actor if you're actually out sweating 110 degrees out and you're you know out there all day every day yeah it's i mean cowboy camp was a dream just spending two weeks uh, rather no we were there for five, four weeks actually yeah about four weeks on a horse just every day you know it's out there in montana big sky Gorgeous. No complaints. No complaints about any of it. But uh, but Africa was tough. Yeah. It's I mean it's a tough schedule. You're shooting six days a week. You're you're out there. You're moving fast. You're, you're moving all over the place. You know. You really got to rise up to that for sure. Did you feel at all that uh, you know the first half of this season that you were kind of missing out on on what makes Yellowstone Yellowstone or at least what makes a Dutton a Dutton? Um, or did you get to kind of make up for that? You know, not only acting with some of these icons like i'm assuming helen mirren and you get a couple scenes together right. but you know riding horses and things like that are you going to make up for lost time in the second half i think uh yeah i mean he's 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 got a journey home for sure but i think uh i think he'll i think he'll get home in a big way and uh potentially be making up for lost time the sheer production of these shows of the Yellowstone universe is absolutely massive. Now you've been involved in, in huge shows before, um, you, you know, and I'm assuming like a Roland Emmerich film is probably not a small production by any means, but has anything kind of matched, uh, you know, this globe trotting adventure that you've been on? No, no, not even close. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I've been in some big productions and, uh, you know, in, in various, sizes of roles and whatnot and has been on sets not as an actor that were massive productions but i i yeah showing up on a set and you've got 
400 extras and explosives and the things. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of scenes in the upcoming episodes as well, which were unbelievably expansive. Um, and it, it's a pretty wild feeling when you get out of the van at 5 a.m. and you're going, what? yeah, how long have they been working on this? This is <laughs> it's like it's phenomenal. It's just, And as an actor, you couldn't ask for anything better because you don't you're not you're not on soundstage in front of a green screen you're going okay well there's a thing here and you're like no you're there it's all everything you're seeing is there it's, it's, it's all there the other thing that i really enjoy i think about the prequels about 1883 and 1923 is they're a touch more romanticized than i think the more contemporary yellowstone and what i love not only bringing back isabel may for elsa but we see this real, I don't know, sibling connection between her character and Spencer and the fact that he, uh, you know, maybe in his soul is a poet and a romantic. Um, was there an aspect to Spencer being kind of a dichotomous character that you found more challenging as an actor to bring to the surface? You know, I, from the jump with Spencer, I felt like I resonated with him so deeply. It's just been the the most rewarding creative experience I've ever had as an actor for sure because of how I feel connected to him and it hasn't it hasn't been so much a challenge as 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 it it's just such a gift to put this puzzle piece together and for example like I'm happy you said that because there is so much of her and him and they never met each other and you know but he has that same quest for danger and he's he's also so un like unintentionally poetic he's such a simple guy and taylor's writing is so beautiful in that respect and he has no awareness of how poetic and romantic he is he just has it in him it's just fundamentally who he is but he's not looking at it going like damn that was poetic but like it's like man that's romantic this epic beach hut that i've <laughs> you know <laughs> with the linens and he's like no nah, it's comfortable i enjoy it uh so there's there's something so endearing about that quality and it's just as an actor it's great to to have that base and to be able to sprinkle in you know these little things like having Elsa's knife on my hip you know that was something that we you know we came up with because I was like I feel like I would I would need something from her well on that note I was curious when you have this body behind you you have four and a half seasons five seasons of yellowstone you have 1883 knowing that spencer and all of the duttons have certain characteristics uh that we've all come to love was there ever a chat with taylor or the director at any point saying can you bring out a little more john can you give me casey's romanticism or was your preparation as an actor something that you kind of went you know i really want to bring a little of them into my performance more and more. Yeah, we, you know, we never really spoke individually of any characters from Yellowstone or 83, but there was a discussion of just generally about how the men in the Dutton family communicate and how they handle themselves and compose themselves. And there is this generational way of dealing with things and showing up as a man in the world and being noble um there's like a nobility that i really loved about this character and that i think is a through line in a lot of these guys you know in terms of them doing whatever they can to show up for their family and the people they love and they go to the end of the earth to to, to be that for them it's just it's just a noble characteristic and trait and so yeah, there was there was a discussion definitely about there's a very specific like Dutton masculine presence or, or vibe, however you want to call it, that is a through line between all the characters, between my father and my lineage. And you know, it, it you can tell that they're all cut from the same cloth. Last question, because on that note, as a performer, when you're performing a Dutton man, there's so much that goes unspoken. And we've seen, you know, some great touches, obviously, from some of the other actors, especially, you know, Kevin Costner. So that process for you, is that anything different for you in terms of, you know, wearing almost nothing on the surface, but so much 
you know, processing so much internally or were you comfortable with that as well? What was your process for that? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. No, I, Taylor's writing is such that it's on the page. A lot of things may seem like, oh, this is an emotional scene. And as an actor, you think, oh, this is an emotional scene. And you, you want to jump on it as an emotional scene. You got to go, no, 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 no. Like you, you have to keep everything so internalized. Pick your moments in terms of when, when these colors are being revealed, right? So for me, like creating that inner monologue is, is the biggest thing so that there is a life underneath and you're not just staring off into the distance. You, know? <laughs> you got to know, you got to know what's going, what's going on, you know? So the pro what, what was a different process in this was constantly pulling it back and restraining things and being very mindful and thoughtful and sort of crafting when those colors are shown and then building the inner life to such a degree that you're able to do that and it's still captivating and you're still telling a story without having to say anything so right that was that was a, that was i'd never something i've always kind of played with but more than any character i've ever played it's like you said it's so much a, a dutton archetype and i think that's also what makes them appealing to watch because there's they don't have to sh they don't have to show you everything but you know there's stuff going on there so, yeah for sure yeah. what can you tell us about uh the episodes when we pick back up in February. If anything. <laughs> uh, they don't get any easier. That's for sure. For any of the, any of the characters. It's uh, I think everybody's got a, a long road ahead of them and it's hopefully uh, you know, people enjoy it. I have as much of it as they've enjoyed the first half. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. Well, Brandon, thank you so much for your time and uh, looking forward to the second half of the season. Best of luck with uh, the, with the rest of it. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Hey, real students. Thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe to Real School, click that round Real School logo right beside me. Also, click that damn notification bell so you're aware of all of Real School's new content. You can follow me on Twitter. And of course, if you get anything out of Real School, you can always give a little back. Just click the link in the description below or the button down there, and you can become part of my Patreon team.